it's it's good that we're focused on the important stuff. It yeah, looks like good. looks like the entries are starting to slow, so so we might kick off. Um, oh well, no! Koto Kato. Oh. No mai, hide mai, picky mai, kaki mai. Uh, welcome. It's great to see literally so many people um, coming in today. Um, it's wonderful to have you here um, and to be a part of it. Ko Bevan Smith, Toko Ingoa, here, Secondary Transitions, Kai Mahi Aho, Kete Tahu, Otema Tauranga. Um, so I'm Bevan Smith. I am one of the Secondary Transitions Advisors at the Regional Office of Te Maho, which is um, a new rebranding um, of regional um, support for the education sector of the Ministry of Education. So a good chance to kind of get that out there as well. Um, I'm chairing today. Um, so yeah, just really stoked to have um, so many people here with us. Um, I will open with a karakia. Um, this is a karakia that we that was written specifically for the Ministry of Education. Um, it speaks of nurturing our younger generation um, who are the, the leaders of the future. So I think very appropriate. Mi enoi tato. Ka hikitia, ka hikitia, hiki hikitia. Whakarewa ki runga rawa. Heria ki a kori e hoki whakamuri mai. Pau tauata te, te pumarua Māori, he mana tikanga, me te uri o maia, poe poe nga mokapuna, nga ranga tēra mō a pōpō, ka tihei, tihei mauri ora. So again, um, thanks, thanks for coming, everyone. Um, especially during a time um, for for many that will be a, a, I guess, a really difficult time. Um, and just wanted to acknowledge that that for for many out there, um, it is a difficult time, both personally um, and professionally. I know that a number of people in this space um, will be working really, really hard to support um, both individuals, whānau and communities um, that are doing it pretty tough at the moment. So I think it's really important that we take a moment to, to realise that. Um, during difficult times though, um, it's really important that that I guess we come together as a collective um, and, and certainly those of us that are in the, the leadership space for this Rōpū see this as a, as a collective that can come together and support those of us that are working in the education, training and employment um, space, um, especially for rangatahi, but not limited, limited to, to rangatahi either. Um, understandably, there are a few apologies for today, um, but in saying that, there's also a, a really strong looking attendance um, online here, which is wonderful to see. Um, we used a format similar to this at the end of um, September. Uh, at was well attended, feedback was really strong. We had some great presentations um, in that. Um, and so we've, again, given that the majority of us are remaining in level three lockdown, um, we've gone for that same format again today and, and hopefully we're equally successful. Um, just just noting that um, if, if you weren't able to come to the last hui that we held on the 27th of September, if my memory is correct, um, there were some great presentations and, and the minutes um, actually include um, notes from those presentations. So a good chance to, to jump in there and have a look if you if you missed out last time. Um, Whaka whanaungatanga is a really difficult thing to do in a um, ropu of this size and in this, and in this environment. So as we did last time, can I just encourage you please to, to have a think about dropping um, any of your uh, um, details, who you are, where you're from, who you're working with and for um, into the chat. I think it's a nice way to kind of get a feeling for, for who's online. Um, I think we'll we'll kick straight into um, into things from here. Um, just noting that we've got a, a number of um, presenters today, four in total, which is awesome. Um, and then at the end of the day, we'll kind of wrap up by coming together in slightly smaller groups than, than this larger one. Um, there'll be five groups that have formed um, and it will be a chance to, to connect potentially over a cuppa um, if, if you nip off and make yourself one and to talk a little bit about you know you know where you find yourself what great work you're doing already um, the youth training and employment work stream isn't necessarily about doing a whole lot of new things I think there's a, a massive amount of stuff out there that's happening already that is wonderful that is incredibly supporting um, rangatahi and the wider community um, and so sometimes it's just a matter of sharing some of those things and um, you know looking for opportunities where you could add a little value to, to what someone else is doing um, our first presenter today is is Tony Stevens. Uh, Tony Stevens 
is from the Young, Young Workers Resource Centre. Um, I've been lucky enough to connect with Tony a couple of times over the last few weeks in a, in a lockdown environment, so virtually, um, and it's been great talking to him, hearing um, you know the perspective that he brings, um, and, and just noting that Tony's recently been, been appointed to the uh, Regional Skills Leadership Group, and so I'm sure he'll talk a little bit more about um, that role and the work that, he's done, that he does. Um, his presentation today will be focused on some of the labour market uh, challenges for youth, but with that, as we know, with any challenge comes opportunity. So I'll pass over to you now, Tony. Not me. Kia ora, Bevan. I'm just going to share screen here. I hope, hopefully I have permission to do that. Um, is that all good? Try. All good, all good, Tony. Should be good to go to share your screen. Okay. Um, I haven't done this before. Oh, here we go. All right, tēnā koutou katoa. Greetings, everybody. Um, yeah, to those who don't know me, um, my name is Tony Stevens. I'm the engagement manager at the Young Workers Resource Centre. I'm undergoing a bit of a, a title change, so that's the working title at the moment. Um, and yeah, as, as Bevan said, I'm, I'm also a uh, representative um, on the Waikato Regional Skills Leadership Group. Um, or the RSLG. So, so I'm here with uh, both hats on uh, here today. And, and on that ropu, the, the RSLG, um, I am representing um, young workers because that is my background. I'd love to give a bit more of a uh, background on my mahi at the Young Workers Resource Centre, but I suspect that I, I probably won't have time. There's a there's, there's a little bit to get through here with, with my presentation. Um, and my korero today is really about highlighting the key challenges facing our rangatahi in the, in the Waikato uh, youth labour market and discussing some of the opportunities we, we might want to investigate um, to respond to these challenges. Um, as part of my role on RSLG, uh, I was asked to highlight the top three uh, labour market challenges facing young people in our rohi um, to help inform our, the aspirations for our regional workforce plan, which is one of the key pieces of work we're doing on RSLG um, over the next sort of half a year. Um, yeah, and so to do that representatively, um, I sought um, insights from young people and from youth advocates and allies working in the, the youth labour market space. Um, you know, so including some of the people in this group here today, I believe. Um, and, and from these conversations, I've pulled together the reoccurring themes that were emerging. Um, and, and that's really what I'm about to, to share with you today. Just a caveat, this, these findings are by no means scientifically robust. It's rather, a, I guess, a qualitative collection of insights from admittedly a limited sample. It's a bit of a short time frame that I had working with this, but I really do think it highlights some key areas of interest um, for this for this ropu. So, without further ado, um, one of the really key frustrations for young people uh, is the reluctance from employers to invest in youth, um, and this really begins right at the pre-employment stage, where young people are trying to break into a labour market that is not designed for them or by them. Um, you know, from the get-go, young people are disadvantaged by hiring filters that see their job applications competing with experienced adults. You know, where their CVs don't show that critical mass of experience that employers are really looking for in, in applicants and in a market that really privileges people with strong networks. Uh, and, and, you know, young people have not had the time or social capital really to, to build um, strong networks to, to get opportunities. Um, and also through, you know, traditional application processes, young people often receive little feedback on the success or, or the, the failure of their, their applications. The assessment of those applications are invisible. So that, that you know, that limits their opportunity to, to improve in, in that part of, you know, the, the getting a job process. Um, Employers also appear reluctant to prioritise young people in, in their hiring processes or to be intentional, really, about providing opportunities to young people. So um, 
sort of a personal observation, few employers appear to really accept any accountability for helping young people navigate the labour market. That's one thing um, we'd notice. I'd like to just preface as well that I'm not um, tarnishing all employers with this brush, but it's enough to really um, see these trends coming through. And just sort of lastly on this on this slide, too many young people are, are being boxed in to low paid, insecure jobs that, that offer little career progression. Um, and so on that point, it, it's quite difficult for young people to get, a, get ahead within their jobs. Um, there's not enough employers really that are providing or prioritizing professional development opportunities within their organizations for young people. Um, and we do hear this from employers uh, that, you know, to them, investing in young people is often considered a risky gamble. So it, it sort of discourages them. Um, and and this, this in turn can increase the risk of young people disengaging from their jobs, whether that means staying in the role and becoming demotivated, which, which again limits their opportunities, or looking for greener pastures elsewhere. Um, and we have heard as well, and some of the feedback I've received that, you know, for, for a young person to get any kind of development or even a pay increase, they actually have to jump ship. You know, the common assumption is that ultimately, if you want a pay increase, if you want to grow in your career, you've got to change jobs. So why can't we do that within our jobs? And just a note there um, that New Zealand, the New Zealand labour market doesn't actually do a really good job of prioritising in-work training. There's only about sort of 15 to 30 percent of jobs that are that are really working on that well. Um, and it's very likely that this is more pronounced for young people. And at a time when um, you know skills skills development is really crucial for setting up your career. So it's pretty easy to see how you know, without access to that in-work training and development, that young people might feel they're, they're stagnating and, and, and perhaps even want to leave. Um, you know, some of these factors also, we think are due to a significant attitude gap that exists between young people and employers. It's not unusual really to hear comments like, I want my boss to give me an opportunity. Um, and conversely, I need to see young people show motivation before I give them opportunities. Um, but I do want to note that I think that what employers often mistake for a lack of motivation is actually that young people have a, a lot of other things going on, other commitments, other aspirations, other um, priorities that are not related to work, and that they're just important to them as their jobs, and I don't think that's um, really getting considered. So there's a dissonance of perspectives, uh, and that suggests that, that young people and, and employers haven't really found a way to meet in the middle. But I do think that the onus has to be on employers to show some leadership in this space. Um, people have also shared uh, in these conversations that they feel employer expectations of young people are unrealistic and do not recognise the disparity between what young people learn at school and at home and the workplace environment. Um, so what I think this shows is that there is an imbalanced expectation on young people to be work ready uh, and not enough effort on behalf of employers to make their organisations youth ready. Um, so yeah, a bit of a dissonance there. Touching on the previous point about that, that disparity between how schools prepare young people and what employers expect, the delivery of career guidance in secondary schools is leaving a bit to be desired. Um, career departments are under-resourced and inconsistent from school to school in, in terms of how they provide this. Uh, and I've heard from a number of sources in the education sector and in some of these conversations that I've had um, that you know there is a lack of qualified career professionals operating in schools, that the funding for careers departments is not ring-fenced, um, so, so it can get, you know, funding can get spent on other things um, and that programs are not organised in such a way that students are exposed to opportunities and networks really early on. Um, yeah, and something else that, sort of, that keeps coming up that, that um, I've heard people in this group talk about as well is, is the lack of soft skills that young people are leaving um, school with, and, you know, and these are skills that are key priorities for employers. 
uh, and we're talking about things like driver licensing and, and training around budgeting and that sort of um, thing. So apologies if I'm talking really fast. I, I just realized I've got a, a wee bit of content to get through. Um, so, and, and related to what I just spoke about uh, are the challenges associated with transitioning from education to employment, also from job to job. Um, so, you know, workplace cultures can be a huge shock to young people. They're quite different from the school environment and the home environment or even a tertiary environment. Um, and failing to adjust can result in disengagement from, from both parties, really. And the missing piece here looks like um, look, looks like it could be a, a lack of pastoral support for young people during these transitions. And from a personal experience, I can remember a job that I quit within three days when I was about 17. I know it's a, it's probably a, a, a different labor market now, but I, I think this sort of tracks, you know, because that job was so intimidating and the expectations were so high, I wasn't prepared for it that I just simply quit. And I, and I don't think that's a unique experience to me. Um, you know, transition is is probably the most fraught part of a workplace experience. And without support in place, whether that is external pastoral support from a, a school or a, or a community organization, an NGO, or um, in organization mentoring uh, from, from an employer, young people feel isolated without this and they can have very negative experiences. Um, and I've no doubt that this results in our sort of, you know, in our higher than desirable need rates. So there's a real question there as well about who's actually taking accountability for making sure that that support is in place. And, and lastly, on this point, um, feeling isolated uh, in this way for a young person can make any employment challenges that emerge in their job feel 10 times bigger than they need to be, uh, and even exacerbate uh, things like disputes or performance issues that pop up. So that is definitely a problem. Um, the, the final theme that emerged was something that's quite close um, to my mahi at the Young Workers Resource Centre, and that's really around the precarious nature of young workers' experiences and the disproportionate risk uh, um, they have of exploitation. So, you know, not only that, but young people are more likely to be negatively impacted by th things like workplace bullying, burnout, having their hours cut or even redundancy. Um, they're more likely to work in casual arrangements where they have little protections. And, you know, a lot of them were the first to be let go, uh, spe especially young people in casual work. Um, when, when COVID hit and the restrictions started, you know, putting the pinch on, on businesses. Um, but all of these issues that, that I've been describing have really been intensified by COVID is what we're noticing. And it does seem that young workers have, have really borne the brunt of that. Um, so it's really difficult for them to progress uh, in these, you know, when these are common experiences. Um, as a rule, young people seem to find a lot of their early work experiences in what I would call cowboy industries, where, um, you know, industries where exploitation is more likely. Um, and these are industries that are, you know, including places like hospitality, retail, agriculture. Um, and interestingly, these industries have a high concentration of small businesses, SMEs, uh, are more likely to behave unlawfully as an employer. And this we feel is often due to ignorance around employment relations processes. But to me, it's, it, it is a bit, um, it's problematic because we really venerate the small business culture in New Zealand, yet they are often failing to, predict, to provide safe workplaces for our young people and we need to acknowledge that. Um, and finally, just, just um, touching on a previous point, flexibility um, is something that, that both employers and young work, workers want in their employment relationships, but that seems to only work one way in favor of employers. Um, so when young workers want to seek flexibility around their conditions, maybe they've got other things going on in their lives, they often meet heavy resistance. Yet the same employers expect them to be flexible when they want to make alterations to their business. 
So these are the the challenges that that emerged from the the series of conversations I had with those those um, those people that I that I've mentioned. Um, I realized I realized that a lot of this may come across as pretty grim, but my hope is that it presents a call to action. So to end on a on a positive note, uh, you know, with every challenge there is an opportunity, and I think you know on this on this slide here. Are some of the opportunities I think we have in front of us as people who want to improve labour market outcomes for young people, things like developing um, pastoral support options for young people during that you know that education to employment transition. Um, is this a space where groups um, in this ropu can can be involved? Um, you know, we really need to eliminate that that isolation. And I think you know people like youth advocates can help communicate with employers while young people um, adapt to workplace cultures. Um, I don't have all the answers here. They, these are sort of just the, uh, and, and I'm sure that there, there are some programs that are already underway that are touching on these opportunities. And it may be that we just need to, to scale these up or, or find ways to promote them um, a bit more. Um, so, you know, some of these other opportunities, connecting with careers, teachers to improve the quality of, of um, career education in schools, um, connecting employers to education providers in a stronger way and highlighting careers in, in key industries, um, particularly those that are really crying out for workers, uh, empowering young people with their employment rights and providing access to justice. You know, they're working in those, those cowboy industries um, and they don't usually have uh, support from unions and, and that they're quite isolated. I think a really important piece is upskilling employers to be both youth ready and to improve their employment relations practices. I think we need to be advocating for more youth appropriate hiring filters. I liked that presentation last week from uh, Present Me where they were talking about an alternative way to expose young people to employers. Um, so, you know, promoting things like that. Um, and we really do need to advocate for more in work training and career advancement opportunities for young people. Um, and we need to bridge that attitude gap, you know, bringing young people and employees together to plan a better way forward. Uh, yeah, part partnerships is, is critical um, at, at this stage. And, and I think we need to help employers uh, with that, you know, that conversation around taking accountability for their role in addressing these challenges. I suspect that I've uh, that I've probably gas bagged on for too long now, but um, I do I don't have enough time to go into a lot of deeper detail. But I do want to um, highlight um, one one opportunity around the regional workforce plan we're developing at RSLG, and and there's an opportunity for us I think to put young people at the centre of our Waikato labour market goals. So, so one of my goals within that is to build a network of young workers and people working in the youth labour market space to discuss the ongoing challenges and opportunities, draw insights from that OPU to inform the work of, of, of RSLG and to consult with, um, you know, on, on the various stages of, of, of the RSLG planning processes as we get this, um, this plan underway, you know, because it's really important for me that we ensure that youth and community versus of community voices are being heard. Um, and it does seem to me that this uh, steering group is already a strong foundation for, for such a network. So I'll leave it there and I, I'm really keen to hear your insights and feedback if we have time. Um, thank you very much. Thanks, Tony. I won't close off yet. I think there's certainly plenty of time um, to, to have a, a few questions if people would like to, to answer them. I think it's potentially going to be difficult to manage it by kind of a hands up process. So maybe just first in, jump in, and we'll see how we go and we'll change that approach if we need to. Oh, I can see Ben's hand up. Where you go, Ben? Yeah, good day. Um, one of the key things you identified was driver license training. And I know for my daughter's um, perspective that's certainly been crucial. Just wanted to let you know that um, we've got one of New Zealand's experts in driver license training here, Tanya Poynton, on the line. Um, she's built a system through the Migrant Centre in Hamilton that's now in seven places throughout New Zealand for driver license training, and there's certainly a synergy there. I'd put that one of the key things for 
RS two three that can be delivered and certainly should prioritise in the region. Thank yeah, you. that's awesome. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, and those are the sorts of things we need to be um, definitely aware of, so we can so we can highlight and promote them and and roll them out on a on a bigger scale. Dijon, was your hand up earlier? Oh, I actually accidentally put my hand up. I was supposed to hit the chat button. <laughs> Too excited. <laughs> but, um, Too excited. Up, um, Tony, I uh, really love that for obvious reasons. But um, it would be cool to get that crew together, whether it's, you know, just uh, sucking up the people that are already here and uh, Welcome to Wellbeing Project and other, you know, like minor groups, whatever it is. Let's just make sure we have lots of food. Thanks. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have Kai, but uh, I, I, yeah, hopefully that we're not stuck in um, you know Zoom purgatory for too much longer, and we can actually get together so we don't have to Uber eats pizzas to everyone's houses, and we can actually uh, be a bit more cost effective and do it together in the same room. Um, kill the guy. Oh, Where you go, Joe? No, is it Al? I think Al's hand was up, mate. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> Cool. Hey, um, Tony, this is awesome. I just wanted to add that a lot of this under Mears, the, the opportunities, the, you know, and everything that you've identified, I think that we're really lucky in Otarahanga to have Mears Task Force for jobs. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so we, um, you know, we're already doing that transitional pastoral care with the school. Um, we've had an ability to run workshops to upskill employers um, around how they onboard staff and how they manage that. Um, and uh, also with the employers that we work with in Otarahanga, there's about 70 plus, and we only work with good employers. And what we're looking for youth is that continual um, ability to have in career training and that ability to excel so that they know that what they're working towards. So mm. these are really awesome points. So thank you. That's amazing. Yeah, no, I really admire the the Mayor's Task Force um, Mahi that's going on, and and you know you guys out in Otaranga have always been an exemplar in this space. So that that's awesome to hear. I think we need to be doing that those programs in in every part of our Rui. Cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I just it was cool just to see it all like um, you know that that you've identified that and, and there's still lots of stuff in your presentation that we can work towards, which is awesome. And I actually um, pulled some of the, the rhetoric from from Maz Task Force, you know, that, that idea around being youth ready is something I've, I've heard people talk about in that space, that employers need to actually be youth ready and not just expect um, young people to be work ready. You know, they're, 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 it's, it's supposed to be reciprocal, right? Great points. Um, Adam, I can see your hand up, but I don't think we'll have time to get to you. I'm sorry. I guess you're welcome to to put that query into the chat and maybe um, uh, Tony could pick it up there. Joe, over to you quickly and then we'll we'll shift on to the next presentation. Thanks, Joe. Cheers, Bevan. Cheers, Bevan. Sorry, everyone else, if you didn't get a chance to speak. Tony, that's so cool, man. That's so spot on. Um, on behalf of Jamie and I, real quickly, with the, um, the Wananga doing the uh, education employment, we're pivoting a lot because of the online stuff to building up um, community employer collectives. We're just basing it out in Whangarawa, where we both live. Um, and we're just word of mouth building up a collection of employers. We've just got some cool stuff shifted this morning about um, there's a real willingness of uh, local employers wanting to come together to be youth ready um, as, a, as, a unit, as a unified group that can then work with the Kura to um, transition that. And then wider than that, like Tanya's point with driver licenses, got a cool guy here who wants to bring in a wider thing of driver license for the youth sector stuff um, with the community house and just bringing them all together and we feel that in our roles we're pretty well placed to be the key facilitators and linkers in that through being in these in these corridor and um, with um, our, our jobs and the employers and schools and we just love it so bro let's catch up as soon as we can and would love to use your insights to help with our chats with the local employers I love it man it's so cool spot on yeah Cheers, mate. Cheers, Joe. I, I've been meaning to catch up with you as well. So thank you for the the prompts. I'd love to do that. And uh, uh, really, really awesome to hear about that community collective of employers. I think that we need to celebrate, really celebrate those employers that 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 hold this close to their heart. Yeah. So I'd love to know who those employers are as well, because 
you know, we, we only hear the horror stories a lot of the time in my mahi at Young Workers Rural Centre, and we, we really need to start promoting the the you know the, the feel good stories as well. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, um, Tony. Um, amazing. Sure. You know, from, from my point of view, effectively, what we've got there is a is a capture um, of of the challenges that are out there, and I think if we use that. That is a, a blueprint to kind of drive some activity uh, moving forward for the youth training and employment work stream. Then I think we're going to be standing on pretty firm ground. Um, the thing that struck me um, and that will stick with me was was your statement: an opportunity for the Waikato to put young people at the centre of our, our regional labour market goals. You know what a what a great sentence, aspiration, whatever it might be. Um, you use the term call to action and maybe that's exactly what it is but I'd certainly like to see us using that languaging more and and going further than than using it as language and turning it into reality thanks again Kilda. Tony Kilda, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hand over now to Christina Muller who uh, um, works within the Tiako Rangatahi team at Anglican Action um, I'm really excited to hear this presentation um, through the steering group of um, had insights into the the wonderful mahi that she's been doing um, and it's it's going to be a great privilege for me hopefully along with you um, to to hear firsthand um, Christina highlight the the work that's been happening within Te Hinatore program for young wahine over to you Christina thank you oh, kia ora. Um, I'm just going to try and share my can you see my screen? Not as yet. Okay, one second, sorry. I'm not sure. I think Tony might need to un oh, unshare yeah. first. Just while you guys are sorting out that, um, one done, of the done. one of the beauties of the format that we're using today, with that time at the end, is that we can adjust the amount of time that we have at the end of the day to fit whatever we've got left. So um, we ran a little bit over there, but I'm more than comfortable with that. Um, so Christina, just for your awareness, we'll aim to finish your session around about five to eleven, um, but give or take is absolutely fine. So I don't stress too much about trying to get back on track. Kia ora. Can you see my screen now? Sure can. Oh, yeah, on. the screen is mean. Your volume is just a bit low. That's all. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that sounds better. Okay, I'll have my mic up. Uh, kia ora tato. Um, I'm a mihi katika te tōtai ki a koe bevan, uh, no nei tō tato hui a i tūwhera. Um, ko wai tenei, uh, ko Christina Molo tōku ingoa, he uri tenei nō roto o hokianga uh, Ngāpui, uh, nō Ngāti Hamo hoki. Um, I'm a kaimahi. My name is Christina Muller. I'm a kaimahi at Anglo Connection. Um, I'm the team leader um, for Te Akorangatai, the youth justice team. Um, and yes, yeah, so just going to sort of talk a little bit about our kaupapa, our program um, that we sort of piloted uh, the middle of this year, around May, June, um, as part of um, our service. Um, so Te Hina Tore is our six-week manawahine program. Um, and just a little bit about us, um, Te Akorangatai, our youth team at Angle Connection. Uh, we are based in Hamilton. Um, we have a, our main office is on Morrinsville Road um, in Te Araho. Um, and we have other service hubs. Um, our service, Te Akorangatai, works with um, Rangatahi coming through the youth justice system. Um, and we also have uh, other hubs. Uh, we work with men and women um, who are reintegrating back into the community um, from prisons, as well as we have a mums and babies program. Um, and all of those are residential except for our one. So all of our rangatahi um, live out um, in the community. Um, and so we go and our mentoring and support of our services go um, to them. Um, and, and most of our mahi is in the Waikato. We kind of stretch down to um, Te Kuiti and go up to Pokino. Um But majority of our um, referrals come from within the Hamilton um, city area. So, yes. Um, and our kaupapa, we really trying to push um, uh, all of our kaupapa to be through a Māori lens um, or te ao Māori um, perspective. Um, especially when we have about a 99% um, uh, of, of the rangatai come through our service are Māori. So, um, yes, and, and our, we also try and tailor our, a lot of our service or our programs to fit our rangatahi um, and not really tick, tick. We tick the boxes because you have to, but um, 
we understand the nature um, of uh, of what the of, and, and the environment that our, our, our youth are going through um, as they're sort of experiencing the youth justice system. So um, this is sort of what has come about um, from uh, our mahi with the rangatahi. So tihina tori sort of came about from that. Um, so nga whainga, our whainga, our, our, um, our vision, our, um, our values um, are to strengthen, um, strengthen hope within our rangatahi and strengthen their, their whānau and their, um, and, and themselves as well, their identity um, and all those kind of things that come with, um, you know, walking confidently um, through life. Um, advocate. Um, a lot of our, a lot of the times, you know, they are put in situations and they are in spaces in court or um, uh, with police or whoever, and might not necessarily have a voice or know their rights, or, or know sort of what they're entitled to or what the process is. And so we act as an advocate, uh, act um, as someone to advocate for them in those spaces. Um, we hope to also empower our rangatahi to create new narratives and also change narratives because um, a lot of times, you know, labels are put on them um, and they sort of accept that, you know, and so we try our best to allow them to, like, open discussion and have, you know, like, oh, what does that mean for you? And, oh, that's not necessarily, you know, not the truth, but um, that that that's a stigma or a stereotype. Um, that you don't have to live by, you know, um, and you can come out of it. And so, as well as um, engaging with our rangatahi through positive role modelling, and so we have a we have a fare, um that we uh, have moved into in August, um, which is in Hamilton East, and um, it's a space, it's a centralised space for us to deliver our programmes through. Um, it's just a cute little two bedroom. Michelle's been. Um, she came to our uh, opening, and but it's it's really provided actually beyond what we wanted it to be a practical space to have a kitchen and to have a mara a garden, have a garage to build and whatnot, um, you know just a place to chill and hang out and be creative. Um, we've actually seen that um, the w the way that we interact with each other and other professionals and other staff members. Um, in that space, uh, we see that they they can see a what am I trying to say? They're able to um, see a different perspective of how a relationship can work, um, and so we're really grateful for that space because a lot of the youth come up to us afterwards and say, "Oh, you know, you guys were having a disagreement, but you weren't yelling or screaming, you know," and so um, that might be something new to them because, you know, perhaps in their, in their home or how they've grown up, that's how things are resolved. And so trying to role model um, just different ways of communicating and, and how we can relate to each other. Um, and so as well, um, transforming relationships. And this is a big one for our rangatahi because, because they have offended or, you know, um, uh, or allegedly offended um, in some way, um, they a lot of the a uh, lot of the hara or the mamai that comes with all of this is 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 against the fano or is it from the environment? And so, the yes. transformation that we see actually comes from they. What we've seen is that they transform themselves. They realize that they can actually really have power just because of the age and you know the dynamics that come along with that. They can't. Um, they can't necessarily change others or the external. So they're able to change how they react and how they respond to situations. And so that's been a really powerful transformation that we see in them. Um, you know, it's not us transforming them or them transforming their parents or whoever, but it's it's them sort of having, going through the process. And as a, as a byproduct, they, you know, the transformation happens. Um, and... We also encourage, really encourage our rangatahi um, to establish, build and maintain um, their connections to their whānau hapu iwi. A lot of times those connections have been severed 
um, and sometimes they don't even know where to start. And so um, part of Te Hina Tore as well, as we'll see um, soon, is that we um, we really, that is sort of the foundation of our mahi, um, is your identity, um, who you are, where you're from, you know, um, where, uh, where, where do you stand on this planet, you know, on this earth? And I think a lot of that has been lost with a lot of our whanau um, that come for our service. Yeah, sorry, so <laughs> moving on. Um, so te hina tore. Um, this came about, I think, I've, I've been in the youth justice space for almost three years now, um, and I've seen that the need for programs that are specific to young wahine um, that are coming through the youth justice system are slim to none. Um, there are some for our boys. We have, there's a Start Taranaki program, there's Bros for Change, there's, they have other sort of uh, Mauraco, uh, Kopapa, and other sort of uh, Manatani uh, Kopapa happening. And fair enough, because I would say about 90%, 85 to 90% of the um, the youth that come for our service are male, <coughs> but that leaves, there's nothing really for our girls, um, especially in the Waikato area. And so the need for a sort of specific um, program um, is what drove Te Hina Tore, was like, okay, let's, let's create it. We do a lot of the mahi anyways, but it, the Te Hina Tore is more intentional about what we, what we want to do. Um, and so just for those that maybe don't know, um, the story of Te Hina Tore comes from um, the, the Māori creation story, or well, one of the versions. Um, and so Rangi and Papa were in an embrace and their, all their tamariki were in, um, in the middle of that embrace. And so um, when, and, and that was Te Kore Te Pō, you know, the darkness and the night. And so through, um, when Rangi and Papa would move, you know, to um, stretch or, or whatever, um, every now and then shafts of light would come through um, and and the children will be like, oh, what is that? You know, and that, that shaft of light is called Tehina Tore. And so what we sort of see from that is, well, and what they saw was the, a spark of curiosity. And that's sort of, that led to the potential and and eventually them sort of separating their parents and kaputa ki te whai ao te ao marama. And so that's sort of what we hope um, this program is is we can be that shaft of light, you know, but you still need to go through the struggle and you still need to go through, you know, um, that, that, but we're here. We're like, yes, there is something beyond, you know, um, what, what you're, what you're encapsulated in. Um, but it's up to you. And that's sort of always our, our whole thing about, um, all about the kaupapa that we have, um, is that like everything is here. For you but you have to take it you know it's 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 your decision and it's your choice and it's you that take makes the action um and so yeah that's just a bit about um the kōrero for tehina tore um and so tehina tore the program um aims to obviously uplift confidence um knowledge and mana um we have a series of about of six workshops um that are focused on cultural connectedness practical life skills and preparation um for study uh, or entering the workforce um, and I guess our hope for Tehina Tore um, at the end of it, um, when they come out, is that it sets a strong foundation um, for our wahine, um, especially because we, we identify that our wahine, our girls, are the key. Um, and when we look at um, our women who come out of our prisons into our service and reintegrate into society, they, they are, you know, um, sort of the, the, the key part of the whānau. Um, that hold things together and so we sort of want to ensure that that is um, as strong as possible um, when they when they leave our program and our service. Um, and so a little bit about the program. Um, so these are the six sort of aspects or um, the sessions that we, we will run with them. We're changing a little bit just due to logistics on the last one. Um, but so we have our Tua Papa, which is our foundations um, I talked about it a little bit before, which is um, you know, kawaio, um, who am I, where am I from, you know, what is my purpose, <clears throat> and this is sort of where they create their own sort of map, and where, where is it they want to go, you know, and, and 
these sessions, um, we look at their whakapapa, um, their pepeha, you know, their marae, um, and if it's close enough um, and, you know, we're able to, if the levels permit, um, you know, we'll go to your maunga, we'll go for hikoi up, or we'll go to your awa, and we'll go to your marae and say hi to your queer. So we really want to make it as practical um, as possible um, and, and and sort of at least start that sort of journey um, with them, especially if that uh, they haven't had that, you know, previously. Um, and... And yeah, so our tour papa is yeah, our foundations and sort of setting the building blocks for um, the rest of the program. And then as well, our hauora, um, we we really emphasise um, not just on our physical hauora, but our mental and spiritual well-being um, is a huge part of our of our kaupapa. Um, and so obviously with the physical side, we um, we have a gym membership. Um, we, we'll utilise um, sort of what's within our, you know, within our, our rohe, um, our lake, um, our awa, um, our tracks, um, and so really utilising that to, to connect back, but also to, you know, whakapakiri our tinana. Um, and with that as well, we, we really um, uh, want to focus on, especially this was a really key aspect for me, putting this kaupapa together, um, is our our um, sexual health because um, a lot of the a lot of the corridor that they well that I've heard um, from our girls is being like hey <laughs> where did you hear that um, and so trying to sort of you know um, maybe bring in someone from family planning um, and they can come in and have a corridor about sexual health and you know um, just all of those things that might seem a bit, um, well, you know, that sometimes can be, um, you know, have whakama or shame, you know, no one wants to talk about that kind of stuff, but actually celebrating it, you know, um, our tupuna used to celebrate, um, you know, when uh, when you would have your mate wahine or, um, you know, and, and sort of connecting it to our maramataka and things like that, so that it's, 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 it's tapu, but it's also, you know, it's something that should be empowering for us. You know, your whare tangata has the ability to create life. So, like, that, to me, is the coolest thing. Um, and so that's what we hope, um, the messaging that we can get through and hopefully break through that sort of whakama and shame about it. Um, and, and then also, you know, on top of that, the education that comes with that, to be like, oh, I didn't know that, you know. Oh, okay, cool, that's that's cool to know. Um, and so, yeah, that whole the whole aspect of the hauora, not just like running or whatever, but just everything that encompasses that, as well as their spiritual, um, oh, wairua, you know, well-being, and how they're feeling, especially in these times. Like, it's super hard, I think, for a lot of our Fano and rangatahi um, to be in lockdown. I'm not not just for them, for all of us, and so sort of trying to navigate through that and ways that we can take care of ourselves and tools and resources that they can use, um, yeah, to just ensure that they keep, um, yeah, that they keep their, their, um, their hiningaro, um, in balance, um, which is hard. And so we, we also sort of know that for ourselves. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, our kaitiakitanga sessions, um, look at, um, you know, what is it like or what does it mean to be a kaitiaki? What does it mean to be a steward? You know, what does it mean to be someone, a guardian of the whenua, you know, because that's a huge, um, that's a huge um, sort of value um, to our Māori, you know, is our, is our, is our ao, is our environment. Um, and, and, you know, and, with, and whatever capacity that they have to, you know, to participate um, as a kaitiaki, you know, it might be, um, just going for a walk and picking up rubbish, my big iron and, you know, being a part of a tree planting, um, you know, expeditional project. It might even just be like not throwing your rubbish on the ground, you know, and so these conversations are more about opening up um, the dialogue, you know, and sort of gauging where they are um, and their understanding of what it means and is it important? Why should we care, you know? 
Um, and we also have a mara, a garden at our new whare, and so a part of that, you know, our kaitaki, you know, we can we can grow our own kai, we can compost, you know, um, sort of practical things as well. Um, and our tell huri huri um, sessions are of real practical life skills. So um, a lot of that is what the bro was just talking about, you know. Um, some of them have never worked before. How do you fill out an application, you know? Um, I want to get my license. Like, how do you even start? Um, yeah, like, uh, how do you open a bank account? You know, and so we sort of assess what they need in those to a papa um, sessions about okay, what is it that what is it that you want? Okay, I want to want to get a job and I want a car and I want you know my license. Okay, kapai. So then let's go with them, you know, and let's let's model how you stand in line and how you have to wait sometimes or how you have to be on the phone you know, and wait for your turn or whatever. Um, Because a lot of these things they might not have been exposed to. So even though they're real simple, it's actually, um, I mean, even I knew that when I left, when I left home, I was like, oh my gosh, (laughs) mum, help me. Um, So yeah, it's, and we sort of just expect people to know that. Um, And especially with employment, that's a huge one because, you know, I don't know if you guys have even tried to fill out like the McDonald's application. It's got so many questions in it and it, you know, so you've got to also be present and um, yeah, so there's a lot of sort of things that um, we've sort of noticed over the years that maybe not hinder, but just um, obstacles in the way of actually even just starting work you know, and so um, that's sort of what those sessions are about, and also um, having people like Michelle and Joe come in and, and have a quarter all with um, our, you know, um, with our ropu and, and share just also what, like, that it's not just you have to stick to, like, labour or, like, labourous jobs or, you know, real generic, like, there is opportunity um, for other things. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of our tell huri huri um uh space and then our kamua kamuri is just a uh, opportunity for um people to come we because we have the reintegration services um within our within the mission uh opportunity for some of the the ex-prisoners um to come and share you know their learnings and their experiences and sort of you know this is what i did and um you know maybe don't go down that path because it's not the best and Um, But, you know, also, it's more about a learning, not about a, like, don't do this. Um, And, yeah, we've actually done that. And I think some of the youth actually were really frightened by what she had said. Um, But but it was good because it's sort of, you know, um, it might not seem so serious when you're sort of involved, um, you know, with the people that you are and the environment that you're in. Um, And this just gives opportunity to, like, okay, step back, like, look, you know, at, at where you could, you know, the trajectory of where you're going. And now you have the power within you to sort of switch um, to a different path, if that's what you want. Um, and now Hinitsu Hineora, um, she who stands, um, lives, that comes from the, um, uh, what do you call it, the whakatauki of uh, Tamatu, Tamaora, Tamamoe, Tamamate. And so this is about us actioning um, all of the things that we've sort of put into place um, this is about us, um, yeah, this is about the, you can eat a horse to water, but, you know, and now it's up to you, um, you know, we're here as just a guide, and we're here as a facilitator, we're here as someone to just, you know, show you what the options are, but now it's up to you to sort of take that step, um, and to empower yourself, um, to whakamana, um, yourself, so yeah, that's just the gist, of, <laughs> I hope I was just blabbing on, um, of our kaupapa, as a couple of photos um, from um, the last one that we had. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Any questions or otherwise, kids pie. Amazing, Christina, thank you. Um, I think the hands up did work quite well last time, so maybe we'll go for, for that approach again if, if people have um, questions they'd like to ask. Maybe I'll jump in there then, Christina. How many um, wahine do you sort of wrap around at any one point in time? Yeah, um, so we did try um, our sort of pilot 
um, we had six on our program initially and we try to do it like after at about four o'clock on a Friday on a Tuesday but the logistics of that didn't really work so what we're going to try now is um, have it just a rolling so whoever sort of comes into our service or is referred um, they'll work on sort of a one-on-one basis and then we'll have a noho and so we're looking at a two-day noho um, where we will bring facilitators in um, to, you know, um, to talk guest speakers and sort of have that space where they can do a lot of the the sort of practical stuff. But a lot of this will be implemented into their mentoring or support of bail plans because um, it's already there. So we sort of, we're going to see how this works. Hopefully it's a bit better. Just because logistics, it was a nightmare. Some of our youth um, had, had did have mahi or had school or, yeah, so... But anywhere between year six and ten is sort of what we're looking at um, at any one time. Makes sense to try and wrap everything together yeah. and, and streamline it for them, eh? But not always easy to do. And, and, and six to ten is actually, sounds like a small number, but it's a big number when you're, you're supporting su- supporting young people, people um, to that depth. Yeah. Last child, I don't see your hand. Michelle, how are we? Hi, yeah. It's like school. <laughs> it is. Uh, amazing, Christina. So glad that you were able to share and let so many other people into the magic that you have been doing. I am um, I know I've been fortunate like Joe to have a little bit of a closer insight than um, maybe some others on the call, but I've heard you talk um a lot about um just how much the Rangatahi in your service want to work and how they see work as um, like a, a pathway to a different kind of future. And and I see connections there back to what Tony was sharing as well. But I just wondered if you could speak to that a little bit because I know we've talked about it and that the challenges about getting into work are just that much more complex. Do you want to just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think like especially for I don't say like already like you've sort of seen, it's hard enough just being young and trying to get into work. But then it's another sort of added thing with the youth, our specific youth, you know, with all the challenges that they're facing anyways. Um, and so we, yeah, we see that it's, it's a lot harder because they might have certain bail conditions or they might have certain, the employers like, you're not, you, you know, we don't want, we don't want that sort of person um, to be um, in our workspace or whatever. So yeah, we we noticed and like the the want is there and the need is there, but like you like um the the bro was saying, it's like are they also ready for you know for for these the, for these kids to to come in because they're still learning, you know, and they might not know everything and they might not, you know, be as well versed in um you know an environment like how we are, um and so I think as much for us it's about preparing and um sort of having those conversations about what to expect um, and then hope hoping that when they do get into those spaces that the employer is um, sort of yeah willing to not be lenient but just to have some sort of flexibility or understanding that you know it's not always going to be perfect um, and that there's just challenges of being you you know just getting a ride to work or um, you know having the having the money for the gears um, if it is some sort of, um, you know, health and safety thing. So, yeah, the, it, it, it's there and it's just, and it's more about, um, or even just the application, like I said, you know, they I think a lot of our youth think that they can only get into, um, you know, service jobs, which is what you usually do when you start when you're young. But um, even just that, I think, is a big sort of thing in doing all those forms and, what's your IRD number and just little sort of things that, oh, I don't know, and you can't even sort of start that process until you do that and what's your tax number and this. And so um, we try and help them as much as we can sort of get all those little details in place, um, create a little portfolio for them so that they can um, sort of go into those interviews or, you know, those spaces with a bit of confidence. I think that's a really nice connect back to to Tony's um, corridor too. 
do in terms of, you know, it's that pastoral support, it's the wraparound, the system isn't easy, and so often we need some support to, to navigate it, and, and for those of us that are in the system, through the system, whatever it might be, I think there's a responsibility on all of us to, to help and support. Um, I'm just going to um, apologise and, 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 and tie it up there. Christina, um, just just purely from a time point of view. Um, amazing. Thank you very much. I love that. Um, you know, your whole um, ethos is core YO based around um, identity first and foremost, um, and, and even that extent of, of valuing the, the individual by, you know, you, you talked about practically experiencing their whenua when you can. Um, just amazing. Um, and, and so much that all of us can 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 learn from that um, and 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 when I say all of us I, I certainly mean um, including the, the wider education system um, so yeah thank you again thank you very very much um, handing over now um, I think Tania Jones has had to duck away um, so I think I'm handing over to Dujon Cullingford um, in the Rangatahi um, or the youth innovators for the Rangatahi opportunities um, crew within the Waikato Wellbeing Project. So um, looking forward to, to hearing where things are up to um, and what they've been up to. So Dooj, over to you, mate. Yeah, cool. What's up, fam? I'll hand it uh, right over to the youth innovators who have got everything down here. Oh. Uh, kia ora tato. Um, I will just share my screen if I can. Just one second. Uh, oh, are we able to see this? Got it. All right. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Cool. Well, um, kia ora na tato Paolo, kia ora mai tato katoa i te nei. Um, my name is Cody. I am here as a young person um, and a youth innovator on the Hopiko He Rangatahi Waikato Rangatahi opportunity. Our core project team is made up almost entirely of Rangatahi um, and so I'll just pass it over to um, those Rangatahi to introduce themselves as well. Kia ora and assalamu alaikum team. My name is Rana and I'm also one of the youth innovators along with Cody. Kia ora everybody. My name is Charlotte Mitchell and I'm super excited to be here. I'm one of the youth innovators on the project and I'm so awesome to see everybody on this mahi and helping with youth. So thank you. Uh, kia ora whanau. My name is Rosemary and I am the Kaurahi. Kia ora guys. Thank you for introducing yourselves. So um, for those of you who we haven't had the pleasure of meeting already, our vision is that all of our young people are engaged, thriving, and are learning or earning a livelihood. Their mana is enhanced, and they are on a positive pathway to many life options. Our target for that is to increase the number of young people aged 15 to 24 who are actively engaged in meaningful employment, education, or training from 87.4% as of 2019 to no less than 95% by 2030. And so our mahi is based in research, but with action. So we are looking at gathering the existing data on the barriers that our rangatahi are facing to these meaningful opportunities and validating that data through raw insights captured directly from rangatahi through empathy-based interviews. We then want to work directly with those rangatahi to co-create the solutions and turn to our community to help to grow them um, to create wider impact for rangatahi. So as, as part of our mahi, as well as being rangatahi led, we're incorporating a design thinking framework and are taking a place-based approach, looking at two communities, particularly Fairfield and Enderley, um, and working with Fairfield Enderley Resilience Network, and Tokoroa and working with South Waikato and Ngāti Raukawa as part of that. Now, there's something to be said, obviously, about the elephant in the room, COVID-19 and its restrictions, um, but we can say that it has not stopped our mahi. We've pushed through. Um, we rangatahi are agile. We've had to adapt to many changing circumstances in our lifetimes, um, and so we continue. Um, as part of the, and so as part of the, the existing data that we've gathered, where we've worked with uh, NIDIA, the National Institute of Demographic and Economic Analysis, 
to provide us with a literature review. And some of the questions that we asked as part of that review was, what does rangatahi need to thrive? What are their aspirations? What are the barriers? And how can we collaborate and identify solutions to scale? Some of the emerging or key themes were that we're on the collective or future thinking nature of rangatahi. And the fact that rangatahi want to be part of shaping the solutions that create more meaningful opportunities for them. And it mentions concepts like social and, and cultural capital, like what the Fanonga Tony at YWRC was speaking of before. It'd be really good to connect with you on that and your insights, Ehoa. Um, but there are lots of opportunities to dive deeper with this review and some areas that we're looking to validate. Some of them are on the role that systemic racism has had to play in limiting positive experiences for rangatahi in the spaces where we expect them to exist. For example, education. And really validating that rangatahi want their strengths, their cultural identity and their worldview to be recognized and supported. One of the limitations from this review is that there is little data already on the Waikato context. Lots of national approaches or Auckland-based mahi, um, but not very much on, on the Waikato context, as I said, which to us kind of says that our mahi is necessary um, and more necessary than ever. And the fact that our mahi is rangatahi led already validates that young people want to be part of the solutions. And the key thing is that we want everyone to be able to access our data and insights so long as they are committed to more positive and meaningful outcomes for young people. And so I'll pass on to Dana and Charlotte to talk a bit more about how we're capturing and validating those insights already in our empathy journey. Kia ora, Cody. Thank you so much for sharing that. So, yeah, as Cody mentioned, the NIDIA report provides overarching information and insights, which is perfect. Uh, but alongside that, the empathy interviews complement the report, providing us with the raw and valuable information. Um, the interviews provide us with the reality of Warangatahi and what they are experiencing. So our aim is to interview a total of 35 um, rangatahi, and we have conducted a total of 20 interviews thus far, all from diverse backgrounds and areas, which is um, amazing. The interviews also include people work, working with rangatahi, um, as we value the insights provided by our advisors. I'll pass it on to Charlotte, who'll share some of the key themes and insights from the beautiful corridor we've had so far. Kia ora, Nana. Um, so yeah, like we've said, we've had some amazing corridors within our empathy interviews um, and we're starting to see as we look back on them. And this is a process that we'll do throughout the empathy interviews that we do get. We'll look back and reflect at the sort of key insights that we're getting. Um, so we've had sort of a theming session to understand what we're getting from those initial ones that we have done. And a lot of the themes are similar to what's already been brought up within this um, hui, but um, definitely touch based on once youth are in employment, they see that there's a positive experience. We have had a lot of discussions where there's been that negative experience. They've faced those um, things where employers aren't the nicest or they put them in sort of illegal situations or things that really don't make them feel comfortable within the situation. Um, so it's awesome to hear that other people are picking up on that because that's definitely something that's coming throughout what, um, our corridors. Another thing is having that um, support behind them with whether it's friends or whānau, just making sure in a comfortable space. Now, that's just not a physical space. It's also sort of a mental space and having that support behind them when they're getting out and going into these jobs. Um, so that's some of the insights that we've been getting. But another amazing thing that we've got from these empathy interviews is that we um, had an empathy interview with the lovely Rosemary. So Rosemary was one of our first initial empathy interviews. Um, so we had a really amazing corridor about her um, lived experience Experiences and it provided so much insight that we on our team who sort of goes towards the younger side of youth. Um, me, Lana, and Cody, though we are still, you know, late teens. Um, Rosemary gives us a little <laughs> bit of the early teens. Um, yeah, so early teens, mid um twenties. But it's awesome. <laughs> okay, I'm nineteen. Cody's twenty one. Lana's nine. Lana's twenty one, I think. Twenty. Yeah. So there, there we go. And Rosemary's just in. <laughs> 
six thing gives you a bit of a like very awkward like, thing. Um, but yeah, it's all happening on board. I'll pass it over to her, um, and she will give. See, I'm already old. Like Rosemary will be able to explain her role a lot better than I am with my big thing. So yeah, over to Rosemary. Okay, kia ora. Um, thank you, Charlotte. That's a really lovely way. Um, so I am the kaitahi of this little group team here, and my role is to like show them from my eyes how Rangatahi will love to be like approached and talked to and shown. And obviously, I'm the younger, younger <laughs> one. Um, it's kind of more likely to hear it from me since I'm hanging around a lot of people my age and getting to, you know, interact with them and know lots of different types of people and stuff like that. Um, I'm also here to, you know, keep the late teens or early <laughs> teens or whatever one it was, um, to stay fresh into their roles and just kind of update them on what this generation is like and to show them and it may make them a bit more comfortable approaching young people and also for the young people to know what they are like um and so now we're like i'm working alongside of the core project team and you know as we said we're looking for kind of solutions to help with the challenges and hard things that kids are actually going through where they may not have that type of support or they need that bit of motivation to push themselves to the next steps. And yeah, just kind of getting everyone ready to be connected with them and also for myself to even learn. And yeah. Kia ora, Rosemary. Um, just want to reiterate she's such an amazing asset to have on our team and um we're really valuing her experience and sort of doing that groundwork um so now we're just going to talk about some of the exciting stuff that we have coming up that we can have you lovely people involved um so this is sort of our plan of how we're tracking along with the project now unfortunately due to COVID and all that fun jazz and why we're all meeting virtually we have had to push back um our original end dates which were supposed to be around December to 2020 to, but hopefully that gives us enough space so that we can have those real meaningful interactions, hopefully in person, um, and get that real meaningful mahi done. Um, but things that are coming up soon, uh, are we're having a virtual corridor on the 30th of November to sort of update um, people on what we're doing, um, field any questions, um, and sharing rangatahi voices. By then we would have completed a few more empathy interviews and done a few more theming sessions so we can give you a much broader and insightful um, insight into what the data that we've been getting um, and the information. And then as well on the 7th, 7th of December, already scary we're getting into December, but um, we're having a virtual co-design hui where um, everybody's welcome and we're going to work through some of the solutions and talk about um, what's been happening. Um, so we welcome you guys to come along to both of those. We'd love to interact with you guys. Um, I know we've already had interviews with some of you um, lovely people. So yeah, we'd really like, um, if you'd like to join us, we have, um, there we go, Cody's quite good at the clicking thing. We've got our website. If you want to hear more information, feel free to email us, us as well. We are always free. If you want to have a meeting, a catch up, um, just flick us a message or um, on Facebook or LinkedIn, we are happy to field anything like that. We just want to hear more um, people and get as much insight as we can. And we'd re really love to see you if you can't make it for um, the 30th of no November and the 7th of December, um, then just flick us a message and we can organise some sort of hui. But it would be really great to have some interaction with you guys. And once again, thank you for allowing us to have this um, all with you guys. Kia tato, that's us. Nami nui uh, kia koutou, um, Cody, Rana, Charlotte, Rosemary, amazing. Um, let's just from a time perspective, first in first served 
let's go for one question um and and then we'll keep trucking along but awesome and 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 lovely to see how that's shaping um the strength of the voice that the four of you are bringing to the space is you know powerful ben you might be the first hand up are you yeah so just to say that um the work's very innovative for it to have an impact on government policy it it's good if it's it's relevant and we've gone through the great reset with COVID. You both talked about that there. Um, I just wonder if you could include the COVID experience as part of what you're doing, particularly with people coming through school who've had a disrupted year, but also when they hit the workforce, if they're in hospitality, what happens when the employer brings in vaccine mandates? You know, there's, there's quite a bit of uncertainty there in my daughter's age group about what's going to happen that would be new and relevant information that could influence government policy. Thank you. Cool, fam. Um, I can answer that if you like. Um, so basically, at the moment, the empathy interviews are obviously super reflective of the current environment. And so that's really nice to have a whole set of rich information and literally heart on sleeve chats, you know, from the good to the bad to the ugly. So I think whatever comes out there is going to definitely reflect the environment. What would happen later on is that there'll be some co-design and prototyping that happens together with young people. And so I think because we'd be responding to the information gathered there, a lot of the solutions and aspirations will be derived from that. But the nice thing about that whole co-design process is that We'll be inviting a wide range of stakeholders to take part in that and to also um, sponsor some of the solutions and aspirations that come out. So widening the um, yeah, widening the influence of this whole project is something that's really important to us. And of course, we will be relying on a lot of you guys to um, see how that might work. And I can chime in, definitely within the empathy interviews, we have just naturally been getting that information about um, COVID and the uncertainty that it is bringing. Um, and definitely um, we might, now that the vaccine mandates and things are coming to force, um, that's definitely something that we'll um, engage with in our corridors um, because some of the information that we have been getting is it's just made um, so many things more difficult with the going to uni, finishing high school, all those sort of things. So that's definitely something that's emerging through our research. But thank you for bringing that up because that's something that definitely needs to be number one when we're um, looking at these sort of things. Awesome. Thanks again, team. Um, another consistent thread coming through is that place-based approach that you're bringing to your mahi um, connects it directly to Christina's um, kōrero as well. Um, the commitment in terms of the kaupapa that you're approaching or using, using, utilising, uh, the fact that you're pushing dates out to stay true to that kaupapa, I really, you know, I respect and acknowledge. And Cody, um, your wero to the uh, Ministry of Education in te tahu o te amatauranga in terms of uh, systemic racism didn't go unnoticed either. Um, and, and from my point, one of you just to acknowledge this it's very much on our radar it's a huge part of the focus that that we are bringing at the moment there's a lot of professional development and learning that's happening across our system it won't change overnight but um, to reassure you it is very much on our radar and it's something that that we know we need to address and do better around so um, just wanted to make sure that um, I acknowledged um, your wedal. Tell the bear then. Um, to our final presentation this morning um, so one of the challenges that I have in this environment is I'm not used to chairing, coordinating, presenting in a in a virtual world. Um, so our last presenter um, is actually hopefully going to help us all um, with this aspect. Um, so Te Aho O Te Kura Painamu, usually known now as Te Kura, traditionally known as perhaps the Correspondence School, is actually um, our biggest school uh, in our Aotearoa, and um, they work in a different way, in a different medium, but they remain a school like any other that's actually not like any other. Um, so I, I welcome uh, David Green uh, um, from Te Kura, uh, to present now, and David's going to highlight um, a little bit of the mahi that they've been doing uh, to support Rangatahi in a virtual uh, world for some time, well before COVID, um, and I'm hoping that there might well be some lessons for all of us in terms of the way that we work in this virtual space. Kia ora, David. Morena uh, Tato, thank you for the opportunity of presenting here this morning. Um, 
No, I ran a ho co log a law te mauna, co sleni te awa, co Silvia Rawa, co Ivor, Okumatua, uh, co Heather Tokuahine, co Ruben, Rawa co Bella, uh, Oku Tamariki, co Rauri Toku Inua, Narera Tenekoto, Tenekoto, Tenekoto Katoa. Um, I'm accompanied by Kay Kinney, who's going to do the first part of our presentation this morning, and she's just going to give you an overview of how Takoda operates, especially in the online environment, and we'll be focusing on that. Um, and particularly in a time of COVID when our students, um, our children are in education in the online space now, possibly for many for the first time, uh, we have a little bit more experience of this and hopefully we can share some of this with you guys today and you can pick up some ideas for yourselves. So Kay, when you're ready, I'll let you start and then I'll come back in again in a few minutes. Kia ora, David. I'm Tina Tata um, Katoa. Um, my name's Kay Kinney and I'm the Regional Leader of Learning at um, Takura and we're based in the Hamilton, both David and I. Um, so I can presume you can see my slide, um, my screen because I can't see you, so I presume that's fine. So looks good, um, Kay. Thanks, good. I think you have muted yourself. You have mute, I, think. I think you've muted, muted Kay. Let's see if we can. Hey. Okay, who are we? We're the largest um, state-funded educational um, provider. We offer a range of personalised learning programmes and courses. We've got students that can jump in and just do um, um, one standard, or if they're looking for their literacy, they may just want to focus on that, or they can do a full-time course. Um, we also um, have trade academy courses the students might go to a polytech or another provider to do a one day and then they spend the other four so-called days with um, us on other topics or subjects students for all ages are welcome um, if they're under 16 they need um, to get an moe um, eligibility um, there's different criteria that they can come in by we have regional offices in Wellington, Auckland, Hamilton and Christchurch, and we've got quite a few in other sub-regional. It all used to be based in Wellington, but now um, it's regionalised because we need to get um, kaimahi on the ground that actually know the region and, and have the contacts. So we basically tailor individual programmes to every, um, every the needs of every Okona that we get. Um, it's free from 16 to 19. If you're turning 20 on that um, year, um, you may need to, there may be a, um, a fee. But basically, it's free to all young adults. I'm just going to try and. Okay, so just um, we are celebrating our centennial next year. So we've been on um, in the space for over. 100 years now, 1922, when the sole teachers um, set up the first correspondence scheme. So it's really exciting. So we have our um, Taro Punamu, which is our local curriculum, and this is really important. It's um, and it's um, this is what we how we how we work. So there's, there's there is three parts, Nā Matapōna, which is our guiding principles, Nā Ahinga, which is our dispositions, and Ara Ako is how we go about um, delivering our programme. So our guiding principles, and we these are interweave with all of all of the work that we do with our young people. Um, so Kotahi Tanga, the wellbeing, the relevance, Waitaki, the rig around um, what we are actually providing the students. Um, we want them to have their own agency, whakamana, and it's the most important, as everyone knows, is those um, whakawhananga tanga, which is the relationships so that we spend a lot of time working on to, because if we don't have those, especially in an online environment, it's very difficult to move our akona in their learning journey, or on their learning journey. Okay, so um, the capabilities and dispositions na ahinga, um, we see as so important for our young people is making sure, first of all, and especially at the, um, in the environment that we're in, 
their well-being is really um, looked after and acknowledged. Um, all of these ones, the staff at Kaimahi are having a lot of um, PLD around what it looks like, what it um, feels like, what it looks like for our Kona. Um, the most important one we've moved on, I think, I well, know they're all important, is that Ara Akal, which is really looking at how we deliver our programs. So discipline thinking is basically like old old school subjects. So they're all so, um, siloed, they sit um, separated. So you have your English, your maths, and your home ec, your primary production, um, all of the basic subjects, and they and the students just go in and choose a subject and they can do and they and they, they work in that space. Or we do a connect ed, which we're connecting standards across around interests or topics that the students choose. So they might choose like climate change. So we then look at how we can put a bundle of standards around the level that the students at um, to help them work through those topics that they're really interested in. So they um, the Kaimanaki will do that for them. Or they can do a project. Um, we run Hun Ako, which are face-to-face -face and or online advisories. Obviously, at the um, present time in the Hamilton or Waikato area, we can only do fake, um, online. In our Hastings, Tauranga, um, other spaces, we can still run our face-to-face -face, um, advisories. And with what you have heard in the last quarter um, for the Leaving to Learn um, is one space that we're really um, wanting to develop further. So I've just heard those amazing, some of the amazing work other people have done, and it's all around this leaving to learn, learning outside the classroom. Um, so that's a really big emphasis to try and um, get um, a corner to understand that you can actually learn what you learn outside the classroom with a mentor or a grandparent or um, anybody is really important learning. Moving on. Okay, I'm now going to pass it over to David. Thanks, Kay. Um, uh, kia ora, everybody. Thanks. Uh, for the invitation to join you. And I just want to say how impressed I am with the young speakers that I've listened to this morning, uh, particular, particularly Christine and um, Rosemary and her crew. Uh, it's it's really invigorating to see what you guys are doing with, with yeah, young people today, especially young people who might not be in Cura at the moment, but are still are still looking for opportunities to learn and looking for opportunities to progress with their lives. And I'm hoping that from our presentation that you guys will see connections that you can make with us and that we can make with your Akona and your people. Because Takura is about working with people who are not perhaps in the mainstream of education, but who are still capable and who still want to learn. And that's the important lesson that I would really like you guys to take away this morning. Um, at the heart of it, though, we are a school, we are a Kura, and the things we do are exactly the same as the things that people do in the mainstream of education. So while there's a huge technological side to the way in which we work, the outcomes that we look for with our Alcona are pretty much the same as you get in a mainstream school. In other words, we want our kids to be really successful, to get a gain of focus on where they're going with their futures and to grab opportunities with both hands and have fantastic lives as a result of their experiences with us. We look at the Alcona not just as learners, we look at them as individuals with needs that need to be fulfilled in order for them to fulfill their potential. And as a Kayako, as a Kaimanaki myself, um, in my communications, I am firstly a, a subject teacher, but I'm also a form teacher, uh, Kaimanaki with my Akana. And that role is very much the same as the role that will be fulfilled in mainstream school. Um, and when I'm working with Akana, I'm working with the exact same kids. As, as, as I would be working with in a mainstream school, who present all the same challenges that you get in mainstream school. Uh, they don't get their work in on time. Um, they've got other distractions going on while they're in the workspace. Oh, it, I've got a message on Insta. Hmm, I wonder what's in the fridge. Uh-oh, here's mum, I better look like I'm working. These are the same things that the kids have to deal with in, in mainstream school. And they have their own ways of dealing with it and getting through their mahi at the same time. Um, Takura is a hugely complex world when you first come into it because there's so many different things going on. So um, we have to think about 
um, and what I want to convey to you is um, how we communicate with our Akana, um, how we do it in the online space. And if you think about a place like ourselves and probably your environment as well, you probably have tons of different ways of contacting and keeping in touch with your Akana or your people. Um, and in Takura, we have our own software system, My Takura, in, in which we have all the Mahi, all the work modules where they submit work, where work is assessed. But we also use phone, text. We have online Huina Ako, our, our online meetings. Um, for me, I have um, my online, uh, my Huina Ako is in Tokoroa. I uh, haven't been able to get down there for the past few months, but we meet every week in the online space. Um, I, I also work one to one with Akana and with their Fanau, and I also run online subject tutorials. So a lot of what I do is what pretty much what we're doing at the moment. We have a number of different platforms that we work off uh, Teams, Google Drive, Bongo, which is our version of Zoom, very similar to this. And our shared content can be text, visual, and audio. Um, and our Akana, because they work off Microsoft and Apple, we're having to deal with multiple versions of the same software. Uh, can I have the next slide, please, Kay? So, if you're in a similar situation, if you're communicating online, um, these are the challenges then of working in the online space. Firstly, it's the technical challenge. How are our Akana connecting? How do they use us? What's the best platform for them? And because we work individualized programs, we're able to pick that up pretty quickly. So some Akana like to submit work in Word, some like to do it in pages, some like to do it in, uh, through other media. You have to be um, your software has to be compatible up to speed with where they are coming from, because there's nothing worse than complications with sending in Mahi or getting um, assessments back. Secondly, and uh, these, this is really important, is do they understand the purpose of your communication? Are you creating a coherent learning environment? And this is central to our work with Akana, because if what we're doing doesn't make sense to them, then they are going to lose interest pretty quickly and the Akana wanders off elsewhere into different spaces away from where we want them to be with Takura. We want their time as soon as they switch on their laptop, as soon as they get into their Mahi, they know exactly what they're going to be doing from the get go. And it's three or four clicks, they're into their Mahi. One couple of clicks on, you know, on the phone, they're in, they can contact their teacher, click, they can email their teacher, but everything has to be as, as clear and as simple as possible. I can have the next slide, please, Kay. So on the surface, it sounds really complicated, but I'll have to, um, if I can introduce a good friend of mine, uh, a good friend of yours, I'm sure, is Atticus Finch, Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird, probably betraying my roots as an English teacher. Um, but Atticus Finch was the lawyer in this great novel, uh, a very wise individual who was defending um, an unfortunate black man in, in a very difficult case in the southern states of America. And he was, he was a great teacher to his young daughter, and he said to her, you never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. Um, that sounds a bit more like Forrest Gump. And this is the thing that we focus on in Takura, trying to see the world from our Akana's point of view. And from, for your, from your perspective as well, from the point of view of the people that you're working with. And if I can say, Christine, this is what was so enjoyable and, and interesting about your presentation is that you are exactly in that space. You are working with young people who've had difficult experiences, but you're working from where they are, not from where you want them to be. And that's crucial also in our role um, as Kayaki, but also as Kaimanaki. So with online teaching, we look at the world from our students' point of view. And if our students struggled at school or if they got bullied, felt different or isolated, got told they couldn't succeed, what is the most important element that you can bring into your teaching of these young people? And the, 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 the word is compassion. Once you begin to feel and experience where they are, 
what they've had to deal with in their lives. And some of our, our Akona, because they've been out of mainstream for different reasons, um, they have had very painful personal experiences. Some of our Akona are, have learning difficulties which prevent them from being able to attend mainstream school. Some of our Akona have had disjointed learning as their fa now have traveled around the country. They've had four, five, 10 different, uh, 10 different schools that they've attended. Now they have Takura. Now we fill that space called learning and we have to make that as comprehensive and as accessible as possible. So when we go into our, into our Mahi with Akona, these are the lessons that I would ask you to take away, especially if you're going into the online space as well. Um, the first thing with, um, particularly with NCA, very easy to do with NCA, is that your Akona should enjoy success and enjoy success quickly. And I mean within a couple of days or even a week of be becoming an Akona with Takura, I want to see my kids getting credits. Um, for many of my kids, they've never experienced any kind of success before. So even if it's a two credit paper in filling out a form, it's the fact that they've actually got that confidence to succeed that gives them confidence to succeed again. So once you have your kids on board with you and they feel confident in, in succeeding, it gives them not just the confidence to succeed, but the confidence to learn and to try new stuff. Sounds very simple, but it is amazingly effective. Once you have your Akona on board, you want to keep them on board. And that means that you've got to have a clarity of the task so that Akona know exactly what they're going to be doing from one day to the next. And particularly in my subject, which is English, um, I've developed learning plans with my Akana, which I'll show you in a couple of moments, which show the Akana what is expected of them, of them, not just from one week to the next or one term to the next, but actually from one day to the next. So that even if they can't follow a learning plan day by day, they understand that they pick it up from the last place that they left off. So I always say to them, this is going to take eight weeks, but you may do it in six or you may do it in 10, but follow this process and you will get there. Um, additionally, in uh, you set the expectation and uh, alongside providing learning plans is the expectation that our kids are going to do the Mahi. And that every time that I call or email that I do expect to see something and I do expect to see some progress moving forward. Um, there will be reasons why this can't happen from time to time, particularly in this world of COVID, where many other um, Fanau and, and cultural community considerations take uh, prominence. But for my Akona, I do expect that they show me what they've done and we move forward and they get credits for their assessments they get numeracy, they get, they move on to the higher levels of English. Um, the final ingredient is to, and this is what you guys are already doing and you're all, all aware of it, is to bring in fan out support workers, teacher aides, teachers, teacher aides, social workers, anybody else who is relevant to the learning conversation. Once we have these factors in place, then our Akana feel supported. They're not doing this on their own and they're not just doing this for themselves. They're doing this because this brings them, it brings their fanau forward. And this is what makes for successful teaching in Takura. Um, so if you can take these lessons on board or some of these ideas on board, if you're in the online space, you will find that these things, particularly the clarity, knowing your, that you're Akana or your clients, so knowing that they know what's expected of them and how to do what's expected of them and what the gain is going to be at the end of it. So, uh, Kay, if you can just move on to the next slide, and this is a fairly typical learning plan for literacy at NCEA. Um, and there's a couple of messages at the top, just letting Akana know that they can contact me at any time. Uh, this is actually one that was used by one of my colleagues. Um, and that they, there are dates. And if you see the second bullet point, there is a date on that saying the, the, the Akana must submit work in each module by 
This, this one's for the 22nd of October. Um, and then the expectation of working for at least an hour a day. Now, these expectations are not always going to be met, but it's if you don't have the expectations, then they'll never be met. So for me, this is perhaps the um, the foundation of my teaching with Akon and Takura. Um, if you want to go on to the next one there, Kate, and this will be the last one, um, you can see it's detailed and then highlighted in yellow at the bottom is where Akon finally achieve the credits for their Mahi. And when that happens, that is a day for celebration. So they get a day off and um, I usually contact mom or dad or a caregiver and say, hey, this is fantastic news. Look at what look at look at what Hemi has done. He's got his 10 credits in numeracy. Let's look at our 10 credits in literacy. Let's see where we go from here. And then, I'll, uh, you know, then they they'll celebrate with Hemi and we'll be able to move forward from that point. So this is the essence of our Mahi with our uh, with our Akona. Um, I don't want to say any more at this stage. Um, we were going to have Nikita on board to say what it was like being a student. Unfortunately, um, she has a hospital appointment today, but hopefully um, she will be coming back and wor <coughs> working with us again in the future. So thanks very much for your time. Um, Kay and I can take questions from you if you have any. Yeah, I'll just um, jump in there too. Thanks very oh, much. Thanks, Kay. Um, there is a huge amount of information um, on the um, website, on Takuda website. If you just click Very on there, you have um, students talking about um, what it's, their experience has been like um, for them. There's also um, a link there for all the subjects and courses that we offer. So I, I think if, you, if you've got any um, a corner or rangatahi that want to get some um, other credits, um, get in there and have a jump in and have a look at what we do offer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a phone number as well. If if you have if you have a, um, Akana who want to join us or if you have clients who want to join us or who you think might be suitable for joining us, it's very easy. It goes like this. It's 0800 65 99 88. <laughs> Should we try that again, Kay? <laughs> no, I'm not saying. You've missed your calling, David. <laughs> Okay, I see. I see the looks of enthusiasm there. Come on, guys. Should we do it all together now? No. Okay. Spoil sport. Okay, and um, that's it from me. Thanks, everybody, and um, look forward to hearing from you guys. Remember, oh eight hundred sixty five ninety nine eighty eight. Maybe just time for for one quick question. If there's anyone with with anything burning. Oh yeah, just a quick one from me, but it's not a question. But um, thanks, David. I just think I used to be a teacher. And, um, oh, cool. And I, I'm just like when you when I think about getting employers youth ready, um, using those um, what do I can and need like getting quick success, clarity of task, clarity of expectation, and bringing in the fact you know the wider support groups that we all have. It's yeah. So cool for you know employers aren't trained as teachers or as coaches. But that's the biggest gift. That's the biggest opportunity they actually have to give back to community and local rangatahi. Yeah. And and so Very true. that's a really cool four step process for an employer. You know, like what's the first thing you can do? Get them some quick success, man. If you're going to hit a nail, brilliant. Or get, there's something, get quick success, positive feedback quick. And that builds that trust it does. With, with the employer. So then that clarity of task and the clarity of expectation, if they get struggling, they're not scared to ask for help and they're not going to run yeah. away and not come back to work. And bring yeah. in a celebration. It's real relatable. So I like that. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Nice one. Appreciate great. it. Where are you? Where are you working now, Joseph? Uh, to Wananga or Aotearoa with a oh, yeah. education yeah. to employment with Jamie. Yeah, we we Legend. do a, We actually we, we send we send quite a few of, of our Akana your way. Main. Up here. Up, yeah, yeah. You're from the the north of England, I take it. Grimsby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've been up to Cleethorpes a few times. Oh, that's where my granddad's from, Cleethorpes, Cleethorpes. Jeez, oh, I'll tell you what, it gets cold up there in February. <laughs> nice to meet you, mate. We'll you too, mate. Connections everywhere, aren't they? Connections okay. everywhere. Good to speak with you. Yeah. Sorry. Kilda, David and, and, and Kay, um, you know, I, I was really um, keen to, to have you guys highlight, you know, 
Takura is a resource, as as a as a kura that doesn't get a lot of profile, um, but that does a heck of a lot of wonderful mahi for rangatahi who um, often have have some challenges um, and and may not have been supported in other in other places. Um, what sticks with me from your presentation is very much that kōrero around compassion. Um, know someone by walking in their shoes or putting yourself in 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 their perspective of things. Um, and and the other thing for me is is that languaging around bringing people into conversations, um, reaching out to Fano, yeah. reaching out to other supports. Um, I think that those are really really key points as well, and and will certainly yeah. stick with me from your corridor today. Uh, thanks so much, Kevin. Um, they are they are the the key points, but also I think the key points in your mahi as well. Yeah, I think everyone's yeah, they, uh, absolutely. They sound straightforward, don't they? <laughs> don't they just? But maybe maybe we all need to just make things a little bit more straightforward sometimes. Um, kia ora. Uh, thank you to everyone who, who presented today. We have um, ripped through time to a significant extent, um, but I'm not disappointed by that. Um, it will mean that we probably won't have the, the time, the opportunity for the conversations in smaller groups, but maybe that's a, something that will remain on the agenda for next time. Um, I'm going to pass to Michelle Howie now, who is just going to do a little bit of um, exposure to some changes on the um, Waikato Plan Youth Training and, and Employment website, and then um, a wee bit of a call to action um, connecting right back to the language from Tony at the start of the day. Kia ora, Michelle. Kia ora, Bevan. Kia ora koutou. Um, thank you so much for those amazing presentations. Again, when we tried this, this webinar style hui back in September, we were blown away um, at the feedback. And again today, uh, just so much value to, to share the space and give the floor to um, four presenters to share real insights from the ground, from your actual mahi. So um, thank you so much on behalf of the steering group. We're delighted again to um, to, have, to have shared the time in this way. And I'll try and be your favourite teacher and make sure that I don't hold you after the bell because who wants to be here after 12 noon? Not me. Um, so yeah, sorry that we'll skip the networking and um, skip the coffee break, but perhaps I'll just take the time to, to quickly share um, a new development. So we um, have been very fortunate to be well supported by Desiree in um, redeveloping the Waikato Plan website and, you know, building towards the close of our hui today. Um, this is a great way for you to stay in touch with us. If you're new to the hui and you haven't really come across the Waikato Plan or the youth training and employment space within the Waikato Plan, then um, then our website is going to be a great way to, to keep abreast of what we're up to and to read a little bit about what we have been doing and how we've been active um, in this space for a couple of years now. So I'm just going to um, find my window. One moment, here we go. Hopefully you can see a really awesome, fresh looking web page there now. Uh, so this is the, the recently launched youth training and employment space within the wider Waikato Plan website. You can navigate across all of the work uh, and the people involved in the Waikato Plan through those top tabs. And down here in our pages, we've, we've so far developed five spaces. You can read a little bit about, about the vision and the principles behind our mahi in the YTE space here by clicking through to our focus. Um, you can read about the steering group members and the way that we are structured within YTE here, which is probably a useful space if you um, are new to us. Uh, the people that we've partnered with so far are profiled here by logo. Um, and obviously you can stay in touch with us. Please follow us on LinkedIn as well. But this, this page here is a really nice thing to just quickly show you. Um, so far, we've developed four stories um, which are profiled and we have good plans afoot to keep this page nicely updated. Um, they click through to read blog style. Um, the story at the top there is how we um, partnered with Wise Group to fund the meaningful engagement of youth co-designers around plans for a new youth space in Hamilton East. Um, so that was, a, that was a really awesome space for us to get real about making youth engagement um, far more than pizza and a petrol voucher, um, which has been the standard for quite some time. But um, it's been a fantastic word to say, how could we do that a whole lot better? And um, so this, this piece of work here 
was a way to actually onboard young people as um, staff for a period of time to access their expertise and their lived experiences and recompense that in a meaningful, um, actual way, plus all of the cool stuff about onboarding a young person and walking through um, that employment experience, even if it's only for a temporary time. Um, this article is, is special to, to some of us on the call. We, we came up with this neat little um, model back in COVID 2020 um, and have done some really cool work around the region with small, small groups of young people to just see what happens when you wrap right around Rangatahi and try and disrupt uh, a certain pathway and see if you can just uh, create really positive um, memories and experiences or something that they're holding in their hearts as a dream. And uh, so you can read a little bit more about that by clicking through there. Uh, Present Me gets a profile. I can see that Tony mentioned Present Me. That's been an amazing little trial in Tokoroa with a new digital resume app. And you can read about that. And we funded some work with Seed Waikato um, this year as well. So you can read about the amazing story of Te Aka Matua here um, and see some beautiful video and photos from their weekend nopo that they held back in April. So that's just a little bit about um, the new website, which has been such a positive thing to, um, to see get off the ground. And if we're sort of talking about where to from here and um, what we might invite you to think about doing, after hearing amazing presentations and getting a sense of who we are, um, there might be some ways that you can connect into five priority areas that we've defined under the Waikato Plan. So I'll just, I'll tell you about those briefly and I'll introduce by name the leads uh, for each space. Even though you won't get a chance to hop into a breakout room and meet them, you might feel um, compelled to reach out to them. And so when we share um, findings from the HUI and maybe some notes with you all, perhaps we can also give you direct contact details for the leads within these priority areas. So the story for these priority areas goes back to the start of 2021 when we wanted to sort of um, define another structure and another way to um, split the very large space that is youth training and employment. And our steering group members came up with five areas that they felt were um, of value and another way that stakeholders might connect in smaller groups. So the first group that we have is data and insights. And that group's led by Michelle Pucky from MB, who gave apologies today, but we'll share her details with you. And that group's really around um, the fact that quantitative data is really vital to direct efforts and resources where they're most needed. But data sets relating to youth and training and employment, um, even though they're really plentiful, they're really specific. And so that's um, that links really well to what the Waikato Wellbeing Project are doing in this space by initiating regional data around this space, which we absolutely support and are delighted to partner up on. Um, making sense of that data is the next phase, obviously, and beyond just the data, we also really need to make sure we gather insights and hear that narrative from people on the ground that tells the, the bigger story, that stitches the fabric a little bit more um, wholesomely. So that group focuses on data and insights. Um, the second priority area is employability skills, and that group is led by Manu John Pimadika from MB also, who's on the call today. And so these are discussions, they're quite universal, they're quite age old around the skills and the aptitudes that are needed to succeed in training and employment today. Um, this, this group is staying abreast of who's in that space, who's providing employability skills training, who's doing that work really effectively, um, supporting Rangatahi to be prepared and fully ready for the world beyond um, school and home. And of course, driver licensing and any of the things that are barriers to getting into employment come through quite strongly in this space. Community voices is our third priority area. Um, and this is really about the fact that if we don't listen to a community and factor in their needs, then we're never going to fully release the potential from anything that we get behind. Uh, so this is a connecting group. This is led by Bevan Smith, our awesome chair today. Um, and we really need to hear these voices. We, we must not leave um, voices unheard in this space. Um, if we do that, we'll be more effective. And, and so this is about taking that community-led development approach to the work that we that we end up funding and getting behind. 
The fourth group is around our awesome youth sector. So youth sector connectedness led by Shanara Tuapiki from MYD um, is a space where we really celebrate the amazing practitioners that we've got in the youth sector. Um, people who know how to partner with young people. And we heard quite a lot of that come through strongly from presenters today. We're so blessed in the Waikato. Um, we have amazing strengths in this space and some gaps in our region uh, based on geography and population. But um, this is really about celebrating youth development practice and making people realize that there's something great in youth development for everyone. Um, and it's a powerful message that employers and, and other people in education can hear. The fifth group, Rapid Response Trials. This is about getting stuff done, um, led by Sandy Muller from the University of Waikato. Um, this is where we try and take insights and data and what we're hearing, but turn it into action as well, because if we don't have action, communities can uh, lose faith in um, systems and can wander, interest can wane. Uh, so this is about finding small actionable projects that we can get behind, that we can pilot or fund and resource or devolve power to and gather up those lessons so that we're really bringing back um, the learnings to make real change happen for people. So um, there's been quite a lot shared today and you've done an awful lot of listening. You've done great. Thanks everybody for being on the call with us. Um, we really encourage you to figure out how you want to stay in touch with us from here. We'll share great stuff after the hui with you all. Um, we have a couple of particular projects that I think you may find you can link into, if not one of those five priority areas. Maybe you have got skills or capacities and interests to help us update um, a stock take document that has begun but really needs some um, some refresh around the providers and programs happening across our region in YTE. Um, or maybe you've got some specific um, skills in online resources and ways that we can link better to community um, so that they can tell that this exciting space is out there because um, so many people just don't know about all these great things that are going on. So I'll close there and um, hand you back over to Bevan. Thanks, Michelle. Um, and just to, to re-emphasize, um, certainly from my point of view, and, and I'm confident that the other leads are in the same position, it's about figuring out um, you know, what value you can bring into this space. And it's not a new space for anyone, but it is, I guess, what we're trying to create is the shared space where we do see our little bit contributing to a bigger piece of um, piece of the pie, a bigger outcome in the longer term. So uh, um, yeah, I think um, ultimately it's a group of like-minded people coming together to try and do great things for um, for the future. Um, rangatahi first and foremost, but, but community as a whole. So kia ora. Um, thank you to everyone that's contributed in any way, shape or form um, in terms of bringing today together. And that includes those of you that have um, been here to listen, to be involved in the conversation, to put a, a heap of chat um, in the ch chat box, which has been amazing to kind of keep on top of um, and to see shows a level of engagement and commitment that people are bringing as well. Um, I'm just going to close now. We're one minute behind time, so that's probably not too bad. Um, I'll close with a karakia. Um, this karakia that I'm going to close with um, talks about the challenge that lies before us um, and that we need to work together as one to achieve um, addressing those challenges. So again, hopefully very appropriate. Me inoi tato. Ko hika te kaupapa, ko ataka tō te wero, me hoitahi i runga i te whakaaro. Ko tahi, te aki tō tā ua oranga, ki a kaha ai mō te te toki tōanga, taonga, hoji, ko a tuki te... Kia tutuki na hia hia mo kakitia, te hei mauri ora, ki te whai ao, ki te whai oranga e mauri ora. Kia ora koutou. Go well. Thank you, Matua. Mauri ora. Mauri ora.